Yeah, uh, well, um, welcome, Dominic and uh, Patrick uh, from the Stream Pipes project. Um, yeah, really interested in uh, what you've got new stuff uh, for us uh, this year. Uh, so the stage is yours. Uh, and um, yeah, enjoy. So thank you, Chris. Um, and great to speak at this year's ApacheCon. So in this talk, so I hope most of you have already seen the talk by Marco and, and Philip before. And this talk will be more focused on upcoming features um, that we plan to integrate or have just Im integrated into Streampipes. Um, so there are three from my side. I, I, I think they are very cool features um, that you can use in Streampipes or will be able to use in Streampipes to um, get a better experience um, when working with IoT data streams. So. Let me just start um, with a very quick introduction, just in case not everyone has um, already um, followed the last talk. Um, what is Apache StreamPipes? Um, so it is an open source industrial IoT toolbox, which enables non-technical users to connect, analyze, and exploit industrial IoT data streams. And by toolbox, we usually talk of several components that should ease how you are uh, working with continuous industrial data streams. Um, so there are several modules like the connect module where you can connect to industrial assets. Um, then there's the pipeline editor, which is a module that you can use to compose pipelines, um, which are based on data streams, um, data processors and sinks. Then there's two modules um, targeted at, um, let's say, end users to um, explore and investigate data like a live dashboard which you can use to to just follow um, a live view what is currently going on um, and the data explorer which is more focused on on historical data and that will also be a focus of, of this talk you see that beta flag over um, the data explorer button and there's a notifications module but just to give you a very quick and this will be the last introductory slide um, how does it work? So usually you start by connecting data, um, like um, if you have a PSC or um, you, you would, uh, in case of PSCs, we're using this great project, PSC for X, um, which allows us to connect to many different industrial devices. Um, but also if you have like other protocols like MQTT, um, then there should be an easy way to connect data sources by a single click or a few clicks. Um, and then there is a, a repository of, of reusable pipeline elements like um, um, algorithms to prepare data, to pre-process data, to also perform trend detection or, or um, generate alarms and so on. Um, and also data things which allow you to connect to external uh, systems, to third party databases um, or also to visualize data. Um, and in the end, you can deploy such a pipeline um, there are several deployment um, options, like you can run it on a Raspberry Pi, um, but you can also use like a, like a server infrastructure. And um, we also provide Helm charts for Kubernetes um, in case you would like to run it in, in your Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, so, and now let's switch to where we would like to go to. So um, our vision is to be a very easy to use and all in one toolbox for handling or playing with industrial IoT data. Um, this is mainly data management, so to organize data, which comes from um, third party systems, from industrial assets, and also to provide this easy to use toolbox to, to analyze data and quickly get, a, get insights and, and transparency over what is currently going on. Um, so we are currently an incubating project in the Apache Foundation, and um, we are now working towards the first stable release um, um, 1.0 by the end of this year. Um, so let's see if, if it happens, but that's our goal currently to finish some stuff that is important for mission critical um, applications. Um, so especially current efforts from the community are like um, uh, improving user management, providing more enterprise grade um, yeah, user management and um, authorization, security, and also resilience of the system. So that's the current focus um, um, towards um, the stable release. And in this talk, we would like to talk about three new features um, that we have just released or we are about to release in the next or yeah, in the next version. 
Um, the first one is more on a user level, um, which is the data explorer, which is a tool to visually inspect historical data. So once you have connected data, you could should be able to very easily um, explore data. Um, and we put a lot of effort into improving this data explorer, which has been in beta state um, for the last few months. And I will now present, or in a few seconds, present also the current state. Um, then there's the client API, which is a new module more targeted at developers, which allows you to um, interact with Streamburst from external applications. So in, in case you would like to have a, an external third party application, um, which needs to access data connected by stream pipes, or if you would like to um, start or stop pipelines based on yeah, the context, then you can do that now uh, with the client API. And finally, Patrick will present edge extensions, which is um, a very cool new feature which allows you to um, move and deploy individual pipeline elements to edge nodes and also move them between edge nodes and there will also be a very cool demo later. Okay, so let's start um, with the Data Explorer. Um, data Explorer is, so why do we need a Data Explorer? First, um, it should be possible to explore historical data um, besides the live dashboard. So we currently also have this live dashboard in Streamers, which is a rather basic tool to show real-time data, um, um, which also refreshes automatically, but it also sh only shows like the last data point um, and the most recent data points. Um, so there's no way, or there has been no way before to also interact with long-term persistent data in stream pipes. And also to compare, compare data from different sources, from different um, IoT devices, and finally, also, that is a connection to the talk from, from Philip um, and Marco before to, to have some tool which helps you to label time series data for upstream machine learning tasks. So the Data Explorer is also targeted at non-technical users. Um, so, and we do not aim to replicate the functionality of like existing tools, so there are great BI tools also in this uh, Apache Software Foundation, uh, let's name Superset. So, but we would like to t focus on an on a, on a easy to use tool um, for already connected continuous IoT data streams and to, to offer a way to, to play um, with historical data. So let me show you a quick demonstration of, of the Data Explorer. Um, I will move to my um, screen. I hope you can see it. You can, Patrick. Yeah, great. Okay, so what you see now is um, the stream pumps, it's um, installation, it's um, the um, upcoming release version, so the current development version, and probably you already know that there are several modules like connecting data um, over this data marketplace, um, the pipeline editor um, where you can see connected data. So in, in that case, we have this flow rate sensor already connected, um, and you can see live data coming in. And now um, you have probably already know this live dashboard, um, so where you can see live data coming in. So that's um, like something we already support for some while now, um, where you can easily add a new widget, let's say, to to visualize um, data in some specific way. Like if you would like to visualize the temperature, where you you can click and then you can see the live data here. So that's like live dashboard and now um, let's say you have um, you would like to persist data like this flow rate sensor over time um, in that case you can just connect um, or use this data stream and connect it with this data lake sync um, actually um, you can also assign an ident identifier for um, the stored data and that's how you persist data in, in stream pipes and let me start this pipeline. So um, that's like how you do it. And now you can see that th this pipeline is already running. And once you have um, started to persist data, you can now go to this um, data explorer. And here you have some features which allow you to, to easily um, in inspect data, explore data um, using several charts. Um, so there was a question from, from Lucas before um, where um, the fancy e-charts are. Um, so uh, we, we plan to now um, add more visualizations um, which make it easy to, to, um, to display data and, and statistics and so on. We will also make use more and more of Apache e-charts, which is a very well 
tweeted um, visualization library for that. Um, so, but now let me show you. In, in that case, I have this flow rate um, visualization, and you can now check or change what is being displayed. So let's say this is now a table visualization of our flow rate sensor. You can see it now as a table. Um, we currently only show the last um, 100 events. You can um, change this and now you will get more data. Um, you can also now switch to a visualization and you can easily, let's say, display it as a line chart. Um, so in, in case you don't want to see the density, you can also click there. Um, you can display only the last hour or the last 15 minutes um, or like the last week. Um, and so that's a way how you can quickly investigate or explore data. Um, also, there are several other riches like a histogram if you would like to see how values are distributed over, um, um, over time. Um, you can do that um, and very quickly show um, or see um, how the data is distributed and also have this great density chart to see um, correlations between different sensor values. Um, and you can also like um, change the appearance um, of, of the chart. Um, so in case you would like to um, to um, have a better look at, um, at data. So let me, that's not, doesn't look good. Okay. Yeah, uh, so in, in case you would like to add a new visualization, you can just add a new data source like um, the Apache data source I've just created. Um, um, you can select a few fields that you would like to display. And you can also aggregate data like um, over a day um, or using a weekly aggregation. Um, but you can also select auto aggregate. And when you select a visualization, um, you can also quickly create a new um, chart. Um, for instance, um, let me check also the temperature so that you get a, um, a fast way to um, explore data. So that's currently some, some, some beta stadium, let's say, um, but this will be part definitely of the next release. And we hope that this will be much better for users now to, to um, also um, um, get feedback from um, what kind of data is currently coming in and um, to detect also situations and understand data. Um, so that's like the first part of our data explorer. Um, I will now switch to um, the second part, um, which is the client API. So the client API is something we target at developers. Um, so in order to extend stream apps, there's already a way to um, to extend the system with a software development kit, um, which you can use to write your own data processors or things and so on. Um, but there are many more concepts um, which are internally managed by stream apps, like um, historical data, um, to um, which I've just shown, um, also pipelines that are running, um, um, which uh, trigger alarm rules, um, which also prepare data and um, produce intermediate results. Um, there's stream metadata, like um, that's something when you connect data, you can add these semantic tags to each data field from your stream so that we can um, that we know the measurement of the data and, and the meaning of the data. So, which is also something which is currently only internally available to stream pipes and also all connected data streams. Um, so, these concepts um, are currently only available internally and we would like to also make them accessible to external applications. Um, so, one example is that you trigger a pipeline lifecycle change from an external application. So let's say you are doing some product quality control um, task, um, like the one that Philip has shown in, 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 in the talk before, um, where you would like to do some image recognition um, to detect defects on products, let's say. Um, and of course, you would like to have a different model maybe for different products. Um, and in that case, you can use an external application to automatically start and stop a pipeline um, or also to change configuration parameters of pipelines. Um, so like modifying pipelines from an external application once the environment changes um, and also to consume live data that has already been connected by Streamers Connect and make it available to third party applications and also like consuming historical data from running pipelines. Um, so this client API architecture um, is like um, we ha already have this REST API 
Um, and then there's also now a Java client, so you have two more ways to um, interact with StreamPath from an external application, and both components can be used to, to communicate uh, with the core application. So how does it work? Like um, this is a, an example of our Java client. Um, so you provide some credentials um, and uh, then you create a, an instance of the StreamApps client. I will show this live in a second. Um, and once you have this client instance obtained, you can interact with StreamPaths, um, like getting all pipelines or starting pipelines or consuming live data. But let me just talk a second about supported features, um, and then I will show this um, um, live in a second. Um, so like the first feature is basic pipeline changes, like starting, stopping, deleting pipelines. Um, then there's subscription to data streams, but also to intermediate pipeline elements. So if you would like to subscribe to the output of a, of a specific data processor, you can do that now. and um, Upcoming features are like um, creating pipelines from code. So that was something the community has asked for for some time now, um, that you can have another way to define pipelines besides um, this simple user interface, also to, to do that from code. And upcoming is also, and this is already finished, um, um, almost um, is like receiving historical data, so stored data um, also via the REST API or um, the Java client. So let me um, show you our client demonstration. So for that, I will move to my development environment. So um, in order to use this client, um, you just need a single dependency um, to our StreamApps client, um, add it to your POM file, um, and then you are ready to go with our um, API. So the first step is like create a credentials um, object and you can obtain credentials from the user interface. So if I go now um, to this profile section, there's a new button here um, for creating API keys. So my key, you can create a new key and then you get this key, which you can copy and um, usually you would provide it as an environment variable or so. Um, but now let me add this to the code. And then you can also obtain an instance from the client by specifying the host, um, the port, um, which is usually um, port 80 or HTTPS. Um, so in case you would like to use streamers without HTTPS, you need to add this HTTPS disabled flag and your uh, credentials. And so like a first step, step would be to list all pipelines. And in, in that example, we only um, print all pipelines that are currently in our um, system. So I can start, um, let's say, let's, let's start this. And it prints hello ApacheCon and all the pipelines um, that are currently in our system. So if I go back now to the pipeline overview, you can see all these pipelines and we have two pipelines running currently. So another task would be like to, um, to stop all pipelines that are already running. So you can do that with this call, like filtering all pipelines for the flag running and then stopping them. So if I do that, um, I can um, execute this again. And so now let's check if these pipelines are now stopped and you can see all pipelines are stopped now. Um, in the same way, you can also restart pipelines. Um, um, oops. Um, and also you can obtain a specific instance, like um, if you would like to, so this pipeline, which are now managed by ID um, or fetched by ID is like, um, let me show you the pipeline called flow reduced. So there's a data processor here in the middle, um, which is a projection. So by the way, you have this monitoring feature also here, um, which was asked before, which is also something new in, in StreamApp. So if you um, start a pipeline, you can see statistics like how many messages have been consumed and produced so that you get a better overview of um, what is currently going on. But let's stop this. And um, yeah, now we will start this pipeline uh, element and uh, let's just try to get the output of um, this 
projection component into the console. So you can um, get the specific pipe and then you can create a consumer, which internally uses Kafka, um, which is used under the hood by stream pipes um, to obtain events. Um, so if I now run this, you can, you should see live events coming in. So now you can see like the events coming in and that's the idea of our um, um, client module for stream types. All right, so let's continue um, with the next part, which is edge extensions. That's a very cool feature. So it's not yet ready for full production usage. It's, it's more like a preview, but it's a very cool and also a very advanced feature um, where we've put a lot of work into, and especially Patrick, he will now present um, this new um, feature to deploy also Python elements to edge nodes. Um, so Patrick, I'll hand over to you. Yep. Um, hopefully you can hear me and see my screen. Um, okay, so as Dominic already introduced, I'm going to talk about the edge extensions feature for stream pipes. Um, just to give you a little heads up, it's only a preview, so it's not um, fully integrated yet um, against the new development branch, but we plan to integrate it later this year um, to, to get you going with the, with the new features. Okay. So if we look at the current architecture of stream pipes, if you've seen the talk before, um, I'm going to show you a little bit more technical slide of this one. Um, we see that we do have multiple um, microservices that are responsible for doing all sorts of different things. So starting from the top, we got the UI that Dominic um, has previously shown to you. Then currently we do have um, the backend or the core, which is responsible for the so-called pipeline management, which in general splits up into this matching component to um, match and verify compatible um, pipeline elements during the authoring and the execution and the monitoring. Um, so once a pipeline is deployed, the execution component um, invokes the individual microservices that are previously registered um, with the corresponding pipeline element types in order to start, for example, an adapter or a processor or a sync. And internally, um, as previously shown, we rely on a central transport layer, which is Kafka but um, this can be flexibly interchanged. So we also got support for other more lightweight um, protocols such as MTDT. So as shown in the bottom part, we always do have this kind of pub sub um, mechanism between these um, event-driven processing elements or pipeline elements. But when we move our view more towards the edge of the network, we see that this kind of architecture has some certain limitations. Um, so for example, if we're coming from um, the top, starting with what a user maybe wants, um, currently he has no way or she has no way to decide where to actually do the processing um, because we only have this um, single registration of one pipeline element container. Um, then due to heterogeneity in architecture, so when looking at edge or different kinds of um, compute resources, we are facing different kinds of um, architectures, such as that there are systems that are x86-based, other ones are ARM-based, um, they require different Docker images, so we have to make sure to always get the right Docker images, uh, Docker image for the right uh, underlying architecture. Um, then currently we do have or do not leverage um, certain node information, so characteristics about a certain node. So we're not aware, for example, if a certain node that is executing um, a given pipeline element microservices, a microservice, if this node has, for example, a GPU. And um, last but not least, um, the central transport layer or message broker is simply not feasible in a geo-distributed setup due to excessive um, round trips. Um, so for that, the vision is to have this kind of distributed or geo-distributed pipeline and node management in order to flexibly deploy and orchestrate and subsequently manage these uh, pipelines in this uh, geo-distributed fashion. So 
in this slide, um, we see basically what the extension for the architecture looks like. So in general, we do follow a master agent pattern where we introduce um, a node component or node management component in the backend that is um, obviously responsible for interacting with all the various nodes um, that are registered within the Streampipes cluster. And in order to register a new node in the Streampipes cluster, there is this new component, it's called the node controller, um, that is kind of mediating between um, pipeline management tasks and um, local management tasks. Um, so for example, when a new um, pipeline gets deployed, um, the pipeline management asks the node ma uh, management um, to retrieve like all available and healthy nodes. And um, let's say we have um, three nodes in this cluster, one edge node that is an um, ARM64 based architecture, which is deployed within a factory, for example, on the shop floor. Um, and we do have two other cloud nodes, for example. Um, we can see that we can start an adapter um, from Streampipes Connect um, directly on this node at the edge in order to connect to a certain IoT sensor or machine. And let's say that we do have another processor in this pipeline that was modeled by a user. And now we want to co-locate it on the edge node as well without um, having the pub sub mechanism in between the adapter and the processor to reach out to the central or cloud-based transport protocol layer but to use like a local um, event exchange strategy. But then um, certainly the, the pipeline consists of, a, of another sync, for example, in order to store data as shown by Dominic in, to the uh, data lake in a persistent fashion. So we do need a certain mechanism in order to um, somehow forward these events produced by the processor to the central location. And that's exactly what the node controller um, also does, it's called an event stream relay. So the node controller um, also manages um, all sorts of event stream relays to um, remote nodes in order to um, realize an inter-node communication. So um, Streampipes is always looking to make things um, most convenient from a user or developer perspective in order to set up this kind of architecture. Um, currently, we only need to rely on Docker and Docker Compose and to have a running Streampipes instance somewhere in the cloud. And um, we provide a Docker Compose a description as shown on the right, or a simple um, one-liner Docker command um, that comes with uh, certain configuration values, um, which we inject using environment variables. So um, for example, as shown previously with the Streampipes client, we use a client API that we can generate from the UI um, and add it here, or we can also add um, some certain node tags in order to um, give the node a certain meaning about the, uh, its current location in relation to maybe some, some other well-known um, assets on the sh uh, factory shop floor. And so we can use this step-by-step -step process so as I said, we can generate the API key from the UI, simply start the node controller on the dedicated node, and it automatically self-registers um, with the backend, uh, self-registers its um, own resources and capabilities, and auto-deploys um, the extensions container on that um, respective node. So it then is basically ready to use. And um, now I want to show you how this looks like from the UI. Um, hopefully you can see my screen, refreshes this one just to make sure that I'm logged in. So here we see a running Streampipes cluster. Um, it's hosted at our facility and currently it has um, four nodes registered. Um, some of them are Raspberry Pis, as for example indicated here with these node tags. Um, one is, is, is a Jetson Nano, I guess, yeah, exactly. And one um, is the Intel NUC shuttle PC, which is currently deactivated. So from this kind of node overview, um, you not only are provided with uh, certain information about your current uh, cluster in terms of um, resources, but you can also see what kind of nodes are online, um, when they were last contacted. 
Some of them may be deactivated for um, maintenance purposes. You also have the option to reactivate them again or deactivate them again. And you do have the option to edit um, the node tags, for example, if you want to change this one to, let's say, Apache Con. Um, you can also give the specific node another meaning that can be used later on during the deployment process. Um, Okay, so what I've prepared here is this kind of setup. As I said, um, once you're going towards the edge, um, it's always about um, latency and reducing um, the amounts of data that is transferred to um, the central location, for example, to the cloud in order to, to save some bandwidth. Um, and for now, I do have like a simple pipeline I'm gonna show you here. Um, so I've already connected to this kind of high frequency sensor that is currently just pushing data at really high frequency to the dashboard. So this kind of sensor here or connector to the sensor is deployed at um, the Raspberry Pi at the uh, edge node and the dashboard will be um, instantiated on the cloud instance. And if I start this one, so we do not have like um, a rate limiting component in between. Um, we do see that we're receiving data quite fast at that point, and maybe that's not always well, like, what we want. So we want to have local um, pre-processing, we want to aggregate data, um, we want to only send like meaningful events to the central location in order to reduce like what is going to be sent out to the, to the cloud. So I'm going to hop over to the um, pipeline editor. Um, I'm going to select the high frequency sensor and we do have this um, rate limiting component that we can connect to this high frequency sensor. Um, I say I don't want to have grouping, disable this one and let's say we only are interested in events every like 2000 milliseconds or every two seconds and only I'm interested in the last event. So what this does is simply reduce like this high frequency event stream um, and reduce it to the events that are only sent out like every two seconds. And for the sake of simplicity, I, um, I want to visualize this in the dashboard as well. Let's say this one is the limited one. So up until this point, it was um, like the same. It was intuitive for um, like early Streampipes users. So nothing really had changed. Um, and now when you come to the save option, you want to save this pipeline, let's say, we want to call it um, Edge Pipeline Limited, um, you're provided with these kinds of advanced deployment settings. So when I um, press the toggle, you see uh, like some more configurations that you can um, add to this kind of deployment scenario. And broadly, they um, differentiate or, or we differentiate between operation policies and deployment options. So these are, let's say, extensible set of um, certain operation policies and deployment options that um, configure A, for operation policies, how um, like to react to certain um, failures. For example, in terms of the event relay, um, we can say once like the network connection is not as stable as it is, um, we want to buffer the events um, up to a certain threshold um, and only then start um, purging the events like it's implemented as a ring buffer currently. Or if it's not like a pipeline that is super critical and we're not interested in every event, um, we can use like this naive approach and simply purge um, and drop these events. Um, then we can um, do have some prototypical implementation of a preemption mechanism. Um, so currently it's only really basic. You can say, okay, um, due to the fact that we operate in this kind of shared environment, we give some certain preemptions um, to um, dedicated pipelines. So for example, if like um, something, uh, some node runs out of resources or gets really low on resources, we can say that uh, lower prioritized pipelines should be offloaded before um, a higher prioritized one. Um, in that case, I'm going to disable this one. And then we can come to the deployment options. So um, this is also an extensible set of various options. Um, 
on how to allow like users to um, distribute these uh, pipeline in events, these individual ones on the geo distributed nodes. So currently we do have like these three options. So there's a locality aware one where we just simply look where the source is deployed. So the adapter in that case um, is running on stream pipes, um, Raspberry Pi 01. So we make sure to um, also deploy the straight limiting component on um, the Raspberry Pi and um, assign this dashboard sync um, to the cloud one. But the, opt, uh, the user is free of limit um, or has high degree of freedom if he uses um, the custom one where he or she is presented like with this kind of um, um, no tags that we previously set. So we had this Apache con here, Raspberry Pi Edge, and we can choose among the variety of different um, yeah, deployment targets that we want to use. Um, for the sake of simplicity, I just say, okay, I want to start it on, on this one. Save, save, and also start the pipeline. So if we go back to the dashboard and compare these kind of two streams, um, we should see like the um, difference between the one that is um, only forwarding events every two seconds and the top one where we just simply throw out like the, the whole data stream as it is. And um, maybe to add something to this, we're also working on making this a little bit more dynamic. So there might be scenarios where um, you don't want to stop and redeploy like uh, pipelines or reassign new nodes um, by stopping the pipeline. So you can also have this feature or use this feature here. It's called the live migration. And um, it looks like really the similar um, to the previously shown, uh, previously one shown before. But here you can also like um, add new um, deployment targets. Let's say for the processor here, it's this one. Um, add new deployment targets where the rate limiting component should be executed. For example, I can say, okay, I want to run it also on default to say start migration and now it's basically migrated to the cloud instance. But I also can say, okay, now I want to shift it back or offload it back to the edge here um, or to another edge node and like remigrate it back and um, it's finished. And all while um, the kind of event streams are handled and managed by the system internally. Okay, so that was the demo on the edge extensions. Um, like we previously talked a lot about the roadmap of what is coming up. Uh, there were quite some points that were already addressed in the chat before. So um, just to sum it up, we also would like to integrate more visualization types in terms of widgets for um, live visualizations as well as uh, historical ones within the data explorer, like using great tools such as Apache eCharts. Um, in general, we always work on improving performance aspects. Um, and um, as previously shown, we want to expose like more um, features um, of the REST API to the StreamPipes client um, in order to make this, this feature more usable and more like practically usable um, to like the more, let's say, advanced users that, um, that um, are not that interested, let's say, on, on simply using a track and drop style, but uh, can do great things and automate things with a stream pipes client. So to sum it up, um, we're always looking for new members. Um, if you're eager, feel free to get involved. Um, we do have um, like quite um, some interesting topics open on Chira, um, like easy ones that are tagged with a newbie, um, with a newbie um, tag on, on Chira to, just to get you started. Um, you can look at the SIPs from Street Pipes and Confluence, subscribe to the mailing list or contact us on Slack. And we're always happy and helpful to discuss your, um, your issues and also where you, where you might see potential for new um, features. So um, always helpful um, if we find people to help us grow the community um, and we're eager to have contributors from all kinds of um, yeah, backgrounds. So within the core or UI features or simply by adding new extensions such as adapters for new 
um, protocols um, or processes or things or uh, simply because you're you like to write and blog about stream pipes uh, we're also happy to have you on board and um, on the left you see um, our links um, yeah and if you're interested um, you can still find more documentations on the website or see the docs um, or tweet about us and if you really like us uh, give us a star on github it's we're always happy about this and um, with that i'd like to thank you um, in our names and i think we can switch to the questions because i did not follow the chat that well Yeah, uh, thanks for this uh, really cool talk. Uh, yeah, well, m most of the, the chat stuff was probably me just sort of mumbling around. <laughs> OK. Yeah, I guess some of the questions or most of them are already answered by Dominic, I would say. Well, if, if there are uh, really interesting questions, uh, maybe it wouldn't be that bad if you would sort of like repeat them uh, and just answer them because the stuff I think in the chat won't be in the recording. So if you want it in the recording, it might be a good idea sort of just ignore my questions. But <laughs> well, there's, there's one, Patrick, um, when the edge extensions are coming. That's a really good question. So. Um, I mean, we said later this year, but um, actually, uh, since I'm like the main one working on this, I have to look like what really changed um, from this or from like this uh, 0 068 um, version that I'm um, implementing it right now or started implementing it towards like the more robust and reliant one um, 0 069. That Dominic was showing with the um, with the uh, data explorer features and the monitoring, etc. Um, so I really have to dig into like the core of like what's changed and um, maybe re-implement some stuff and refactor some stuff. So hopefully I get this sorted like, quite soon. Um, if not, um, maybe beginning next year. So the question yeah. on Kubernetes has already been answered by, by Lucas. He has their Helm charts, which you can use, um, which are part of the Instator project, which is um, on our website. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so uh, I guess you are you guys going to be hanging out at the the, the buff uh, this evening? The, the, the birds of feather session. I think uh, I think every track has one uh, at the end of the day. Maybe yes, yeah. <laughs> I, I have to check. <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. So, so maybe if somebody wants to sort of like get in contact with you guys. Uh, sure. yeah. Yeah, I think you might be hanging out around the, the, the conference today and tomorrow, and maybe even tonight. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Cool. It was uh, cool having you. And thanks for the talk. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. So, see you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.